Greg, how's it going today? It's going, it's going great, man. Thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. You know what? There's just there's something about people named Greg that just really know how to make bomb television shows, you know? <laughs> <laughs> if you say so, man, I, I, I'll i take it. I'll take I'm, it. I'm calling it what it is. And folks, you can check out Amazon Freebie Sprung airing August 19th. Now, Greg, uh, you know, something I just looked up and I just also got to give a shout out because I love to give a shout out to our area because I see that you are from Arlington, Virginia. Yeah, you from around there? I am from the DMV as well, too. So hello, fellow dmv -er. <laughs> That is so funny you said DMV because I got an email from these guys I went to college with last night and they want to get together in, in a couple of weeks. And they said, well, someone said, I say we stay in the DMV. And I was like, that's the Department of Motor Vehicles. I've never heard <laughs> that phrase before. And then I had to look it up and search. And then here you are using it right now. That's there weird. It is. But yeah, the DMV, <laughs> I'm from the DMV. You are indeed. Now, one thing you've been putting out fantastic tiles. I've been watching your projects for over the years. And I just want to start off by asking how are you just continuously able to adapt and reinvent yourself to really make refreshing new uh projects each and every time oh i have no idea man if i knew the answer to that i, I, I have no idea you know i just you know i i just sit back and i kind of think about what i would want to watch what yeah. world i would want to see what characters i would root for and then you just have to trust yourself that the audience will agree with you you know, yeah. that's that's all I can do is 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 kind of hope that there's enough people out there that have the same sensibilities as I do um, and will enjoy it. And there's certainly themes that I, I continue to hit on. You know, I root for underdogs in life. I've always enjoyed shows like Roseanne and, and, and stuff like that, other than like Frasier, which is just a great those are great shows. But I, I never found myself rooting for them as much because I didn't feel like they had real problems, you know, mm. they had like fake problems even though they're hilarious, they're hilarious yeah. shows. So I'm drawn to writing those characters and, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm drawn to kind of the themes of redemption and karma and getting bad people and rewarding good people. And so I, I know I always kind of go back to some of that stuff. And I think thankfully that's some stuff that people can get behind and like watching. That's awesome. And and, and again, I, I definitely want to give shout out to some of your previous projects, the Millers, Yes, Dear, uh, the guest book, some of, of my favorites. Um, and there's a bunch of others folks are probably familiar with in terms of what you've done. Um, and I'm going to come back to what you said, because it, it goes into my question after this one. But that that is super important, because I was going to ask, like, how do you continuously write effectively in terms of these characters and whether these characters within the project are generationally different you still make them very conscious to the world around us so that's that's a huge responsibility and i think you nail it each and every time so like what's sort of your thought process into constructing these sort of complex characters that we can relate to but again as i said if they're generationally different they're still very consciously around the society we live in yeah, I mean, a lot of my characters are rooted in in real people that I know, you know, and and not necessarily it's just one person, but sometimes it's a combination of people, and 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 you know sometimes you, you characters like characters that were on my name as Earl or Raising Hope, and I think sometimes look they're not always the smartest people in the world because comedy comes from people saying dumb things sometimes, <laughs> right? But yeah. but I think the difference is when I write these characters. I'm never making fun of them. I love mm -hmm. these characters. I love mm -hmm. every single character I write. I love them. And so I see them for their flaws and I know what's funny about them. I mean, I just spent, you know, speaking of Northern Virginia, I just spent four days with my cousin, Pat, who was out here visiting and he's a riot. This guy is a riot. And and I love him to death, but man, does he say some stuff that you don't, you have no idea what he's talking about. But like, but I love him, and yeah. so I think of this. It's the same thing with these characters, you know. Um, I think if you come from a place of of loving them, that you're not you're laughing with them, that you're not laughing at them. At the end of the day, that's awesome, man. Now, I, I quite, my question I said I was going to come back to, which is. In Sprung, I, I'm I'm always very curious, especially with your 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 previous projects, but particularly in this one, who is your target audience for this? You know, I'll be honest with you, I don't 
I don't know if I necessarily think about that when I'm writing, you know, I think my target audience is, is people who like to laugh, you know, good, good people who like to laugh that need a break from the world. You know, I try not to do anything too political in my shows. I'm not trying to make any, any statements uh, with my shows. I see my shows as an opportunity to entertain and give people a break. I mean, yeah, if you look hard enough, there's sometimes there's some little messages in there. Maybe I'll nudge somebody one way or another, but it's always nudging people to just try to be like maybe a little better, you know, yeah. or to think about people or, or like, or like to respect people or, you know, people's rights or whatever like that. I'm not looking to hit anybody over the head with it, but yeah, it may be in there a little bit, but I'm not so sure who can't get behind that. Um, but, you know, I, I see myself you know, I'm not going to be a politician. I'm not smart enough to change the, you know, uh, I went to Frostburg State University. I'm not changing the world with 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 incredible thoughts or anything like that. But I'm the jester. You know, if I can make some people laugh and enjoy uh, their day at the end of the day a little bit, then I've done my job. Yeah, shout out to Frostburg as well, too. Plenty of yeah. my friends are alumni for that. That's oh, awesome. I love Frostburg. <laughs> Tried to shoot this in Frostburg. Didn't work out, but that's where I wanted to shoot it. <laughs> that would actually been really really amazing too it would have been wow. awesome we tried so hard but ended up in pittsburgh just because it wasn't going to work out money wise to shoot in frostburg too far away from a major city yeah and i was well, i'm guessing pittsburgh and frostburg is like three hours away from each other i believe it's not far it's like two two and a half hours and once you get outside the city of pittsburgh it looks like frostburg so you know <laughs> that you know, is kind of the same yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> now, um, yeah, and, and in terms of that question, at one point I wasn't sure who your target audience was, but I think I kind of settled on the answer in humanity. I think you're looking for the good inside of everybody to want to want to watch this and have some laughs. Yeah, so. I mean, look, it's written. It's certainly written. It was streaming. It wasn't network. I could I could push the envelope a little bit more. The characters will curse a little bit. You know, nothing nothing too bad. Nothing I wouldn't watch with 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 my. 13 or 14 year old, but that's up to everybody else. I'm not telling them what to do, but yeah. So, I mean, it's certainly, it's not a kid's show, but, uh, but I, I wouldn't say there's any one specific demographic I'm aiming at. Yeah. Yeah. Now I think a testament to who you are and it's obviously radiating in this interview right now. Uh, I would love to know your relationship with your returning cast members, the folks you've been working with over the years, uh, Martha and, and Gary, just having these folks come back and work on your projects again, just what, what's, what's sort of that conversation or that relationship, if you can talk about it. So, yeah. Um, so, I mean, you form a family when you shoot these shows, right? I mean, with the actors, I mean, you come in and you, everybody's just trying to do their best to, to, to create this thing together. And uh, there's a lot of trust involved and uh, you friendships are formed. So it's only natural that you want to keep working with the same people a lot of times, you know, and on this show we do, there are two people I've worked with quite a bit before in, in Martha and Garrett. And, uh, you know, obviously we did Raising Hope and then uh, they both appeared uh, on, on this show, the guest book that I did. And so, uh, so I love having them there, but at the same time, I also love meeting new people. There's a lot of people I've never worked with before in this cast and, and you're forming new friendships and, and, and everything. So, uh, so yeah, it's just something that there's the, there's, there's a combination of this show of like comfort of like, I know this person, I know how to work with them. I know exactly what it's going to be. And then there's the excitement of working with new people, yeah. forming those new bonds and relationships and figuring out, all right, how are we going to work together? How, how am I, how am I going to help get your best work out of you as we yeah. go forward? Ain't Martha and Gary so damn good in this show. <laughs> yeah. Their, their chemistry is there's no denying their chemistry when the, you put the two of them in a scene together because they're friends, you know, they're friends and it just, and there's a shorthand there and, and they can give each other shit in the middle of a scene and mess with <laughs> each other. And, 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 and it's just funny, you know, and it's just funny. Uh, I love, yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, really quickly, last second, I saw that you was also credited for filming a few, uh, or for writing a few shows for Family Matters. I had no clue. If you could just quickly a tidbit on that, that was one of my first jobs. That was my second job working for Family Matters. It was a blast. Such a great crew of writers. I learned so much. And Jaleel uh, was actually a friend before that because I was a production assistant on a show that had the same offices as Family Matters, and we were not that far off in age and he would come up and just have lunch with me at my cubicle and we became buddies and uh and then when I got a writing job on the show the first, I opened my my office door and there he was and he was so happy and we still keep in touch and uh love our tradition for a while we got to get back to it we go to IHOP once a year and have pancakes together 
Uh, but yeah, that was a trip. That show was a lot of fun. I did two years yeah. on that show and uh, it was, it, I mean, I got there towards the tail end when Urkel could get into a transformation chamber yeah, yeah. with somebody else. And the it was just mayhem, but man, it was fun to write. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, folks, again, this is great. The creator of the new show sprung on Amazon Freebie. You can check it out August 19th. My DMV brother, you have a good rest of your day and I can't wait to see what you got cooking up next. Maybe. All right, man. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, man.